Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Kamala Momantla guys, why carefully and thank you so much for tuning so in. So today I'll be talking about two things. I'll be talking about the process of propagating my plant. Um, if you've been noticing on my first two videos, there's a plant that was here and it was growing so beautifully, but I really did just a stupid mistake. So now I'm in the process of propagating it and I want to document that as well. And then I want to talk about racism, how uh, actually there's a racial tension going on around and there are words being passed around and that black people being racist or are black people being racist and I feel like that, that word is just loosely thrown around and if I would just will nip the bud with my own opinion on what I believe and what I think and obviously you are more than welcome to engage um, however though I should uh, ask of everyone if you're going to engage on this topic of which I do believe and I do acknowledge how sensitive it is that we respectfully engage uh, each other so that we can you know just try and expand the quality of the conversation by actually engaging on the comment section and I'll actually be replying to uh, you know try and further my points and elaborate my points where i fail to do so on this video because of time and so yeah so i would like of everyone to please be respectful when engaging with other people be respectful and be mindful of people's pronouns and not call out anyone out of their name not, not misname anyone else and misgender anyone <clears throat> so cool let's get into this video um i feel like i should also just mention i i love new hobbies i i'm always like i'm always so keen on starting new hobbies so <laughs> i got this really cool yarns um uh so that i could start the process of learning how to knit i just feel like it's one of those needs if an empath especially you know when you just a person who loves to take care of people so you need things for people you you do things for people so i feel like it's just one of those things that will really go well with my personality so it's really hard though because i've really 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 been trying to do it all over all over again so you get to comment you know let's just do the right thing i'm actually on my way i'm on my way to 100 subscribers so guys please subscribe on this channel cool so i am a plant mom i am a plant mom and i'm a new plant mom like i'm like a new plant mom like i just recently got a plant uh that was here on my first videos if you watch the first videos you'll see that i had a plant that was here and um i got it in Joburg. um my boyfriend actually bought it for me in Joburg, so I came down with it to Durban. And but first, before I came to Durban, I went to the Eastern Cape. So it's like I traveled three different provinces with a plant that that originally was in Johannesburg. So I don't know how it responded to different temperatures and different weather conditions, but it's not really humid because it's winter, and I feel like it was responding extremely well. The problem only started when. Um, I overwatered it because I didn't know how to take care of a plant. I'm a new plant mom, so obviously when you're new to something and you've not done enough research, you're gonna screw up. And that's what happened. I overwatered the plant. I didn't know when to stop. I didn't know when to water it or when not to water it. But I, 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 I was aware that uh, it's um, not a plant that should be watered every day. But I guess excitement got the better of me, and I did it every day. And yo, it started withering, and it was gone. Within two days, I was just seeing what's your it's dying. So what I just did, I really just cut it from the I cut it from the roots, and I propagated propagated it into this uh, uh, new plant uh, or new pots or new vase or vase. I don't know how you say that, but yeah. So I'm hoping that new roots are gonna come out and I can put it back to its original place where it was and for wait for new sprouts so but that was not my first plant funny enough this is my first plant what's up i know i know i know it's not a plant though this one is a flower it was a chrysanthemum i bought chrysanthemums uh in march and you know the last span of a chrysanthemum is actually like three or four weeks we've got it and I put it in direct sunlight so it was like it was not gonna last anyway but anyway I got it anyway and it died <laughs> so I still need to throw it away and keep the pot so I can uh, just 
Yep. Uh, grow new ones. Cool. So let's get into the actual uh, cruise of this video. Can black people be racist is the question. And I feel like I should just firstly um, explain why I want to talk about this and where um, is this coming from. Um, personally, I have been um, engaging in a lot of, in my socials, I've been engaging in a lot of and, and, and bumping into a lot of racial conflicts on the TL, you know, this, this, I, it's quite, I mean, if you've been following, I mean, if you, I mean, really, if you really are aware of your surroundings, then and you can read the room, you can just literally see that, yeah, it's not happening, it's not happening, there's a lot of racial conflict going on, and, and it's, it, it, I feel like it's way beyond having to advocate for for non non black people to stop saying the K word, it's way 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 deeper than that. That's just the tip of an iceberg, you know. Um, I feel like when you say things like black people are being racist, you are. I feel like personally, it's a deflection. Number one, number two, it's a form of erasure, to a form of um, erasing the past or the current um racial uh biases that is going on and it's um a way to i don't know to presume or to act on the stance that or act on the argument that had black people been in the same position that white people were in when they discovered countries in 1652 or in in the other early centuries they would have done the exact same thing of which is colonizing people you know and putting people into slavery you know uh, uh putting legalizing apathy so there's an argument that black people would have done the same thing and i so really don't believe that's the truth there's no truth in it and it's we we're speaking basically we are speaking it's a that's, that's why I believe it's a deflection because now we are busy arguing on hypotheses, on hypothetic scenarios that never really happened and will never have we will never have the chance to go back on history and actually see will be would people act would black people be capable of doing that? So that's why I feel like it's a deflection and we are really just moving away from the real factor that is at hand. The current racism that is going on in this country, the current racism that is being institutional, the current racism that is point black in your face you know and that's why i feel like it's important to actually talk about this topic so to really just talk to really like expand expand and uh, um dive deep into it i would like to look at what racism is and its etymology where it really comes and stems from or what is is its belief so basically racism um i feel like everyone knows this but Basically, racism is a belief that one race is superior than the other, and the other race is made to believe that it's inferior, it's inferior to this supremacist race, right? So, to just give you a very uh, distinct, very clear, very directive uh, example, uh, Caucasians, they believe that they are better than Africans, you know. Uh, what is a fuss? If you're that type of person who's like, who considers themselves such an optimist, you know, you never just really are bothered well by, by other people's actions and you never really just uh, want to give a damn or give it life by entertaining it. Oh, if you're just an optimist, you know, what is a fuss? What is a fuss with racism? Why are people just so... um so obsessed or so um blatant or so you know worried about racism i feel like i personally believe that it, it if your belief is good and is working for you then okay nobody's bothered by that but as soon as your belief starts being problematic or starts being vi violent to the other person to the next person or to a group of people then that is when it needs to be addressed and that is when it needs to be tackled because we cannot live with people who believe that they are superior and every other opportunity that comes or any other uh hierarchy should be they should be at the top of everything you know they should they are the ones who are more prone to opportunities they are the ones who 
um destined to ha- live a certain lifestyle especially in this capitalist uh, economy that we live in you know money manifests money rules you know so if you racially believe that one race is the one race that actually needs to hoard and be the gatekeeper of certain economies then that's going to be a problem you know and it needs to be addressed and i also personally believe that it is important to know about racism so that you can try and see it when it is being directed to you and especially to note how possessive racism is how uh, subtle it is how indirect it is and you know sometimes it really is just so direct um so it's important to note when it is being directed to you because at some point you might think that you are destined not to access something else but it is actually being blocked from you because of racism so i actually believe that people should be aware of that so that you are uh, personally and um readily equipped for any other scenario so okay i've been reading a book i've been reading a couple of books by uh franz fanon and there's this quote that really just stands out for me and where he talks about how um we have normalized or we have like accepted the norm of living in political madness web madness manifest in cells in a political party or in a political system and basically if you don't know friends or none he was a psychiatrist um that studied the psych of black people who had assimilated into whiteness okay so um he believes that um madness had manifested manifested itself in political systems you know we are being ruled by madness and it is it has presented itself as a political system and this madness has a name this madness name is apartheid this madness name is colonialism this madness name has a name this mad this madness sickness it is um slavery you know um and all of these things are rooted in narcissism it's been it's literally narcissism and it's ruling and it's continuously damaging the lives of people who are at the receiving end of it you know so the reason why i feel like it's important to talk about racism and how we should able to notice how racism affects you it affects you psychologically it affects you sociologically it affects you culturally it affects you structurally it affects you economically you know and politically so when we talk about how racism affects you psychologically would 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 actually have to look at the fact that how it instills inferior complexes it in, in, instills the the fact that you as a particular race will never be good enough so you spend the rest of your life trying to prove that you are good enough trying to twerk and trying to uh, get into the the theoretics um of uh we are good enough we are just as good enough we are just as good enough and you know and it, 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 not only that but it, it instills a lot of self hate beliefs amongst the people who are at the receiving end of that racism so you grow up believing that you the lies that are being said about you you start believing them that there is nothing beautiful that black people can do there is no leadership structures in black people uh, uh black people households there is no um black beauty there is no you know black class or there is no black structures you know there's no black excellence you know and it's it 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 things that you discover as you grow or if you had been privileged enough to grow up in a household that is not affected by psychological racism then you you grow up believing what you are who you think you are you know or you just kind of discover it as you go around as you go um in your life so that's how it it affects you and the deeper parts of it how i had read and this other book what i mean the structural racism obviously orchestrates poverty and when you are a child who grows up in a poverty stricken home there are a lot of things a lot of nutrients that you can you cannot get because your parent does not have enough means to get the enough and the right nutrients for you to grow and be in the right development as a child neurologically and so there are a lot of brain cells that do not grow when you do not have the right um um nutrients as a child so imagine a lot of black people or black children grew up in slums grew up in 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 squatter camps grew up in rural areas so there were a lot of, there were a lot there was a lot lot of lack 
in 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 the type of nutrients that they were getting so obviously that does affect their brain cells it does affect how they grow up to be and how they are contribute contributing to the society at large how they're performing at school you know those are all the factors that are orchestrated by um a structural racism so okay so and then there's some sociological racism how society at large sees a particular race and how society society at large reacts to a certain race and so i mean you if you've been around if you do follow things around you'll notice that there's a lot of outrage or there's a propaganda that is being pushed around when it comes to when it comes to news outlets you know there's a lot of propaganda that has been pushed around you will notice in your 7 p.m news it's always black on black violence it's always black crime it's always black fraud it's always black you know a corruption but whenever where non-black people are involved it's accounting irregularities it's uh, you know mismanagement it's um it's never just what it is so that's how they kind of shape your perception of news how they shape how you think about news how you see news and because they are the majority of news outlets they outsource news a lot of primary uh uh citizens are exposed to the type of content that they breed out type, type of content that they release so black people are exposed to that type of the type of, of, of mentality of thinking would see the problem in South Africa is black people. We have a problem of black people in South Africa and not really how racism is manifesting itself. So that, that's how I believe that racism manif manifests itself sociologically. And then culturally, you know, you've been coerced into believing that certain beliefs are demonic and should be abolished. You know, if you would like literally notice how a lot of traditional practices had have been demonized have been made uh, to have been made to be hated by people that anything that has to do with traditional medicine uh it's demonic or it's um you know it's it's not tested it's not regulated and yeah sort of sort of things like that and that anything any culture that seeks to promote uh you know its culture and its upbringing and its pride in its culture is just just kind of bashed as as not being civilized enough so that is cultural racism and then there's structural and then there is structural racism which is like institutional racism i feel like everyone is a victim of this um if you are black you are definitely a victim a victim of structural racism you know which is institutionalized you will get it in universities you will get it in public versus private sectors you will get it in you know your workplace you will get it in how you treated in the police station how you treated public service uh you know um treatments you will get it's structural racism there like you would definitely see that you are being treated this way because you are black you are being treated like this because you are poor you mean if you're gonna have to look at structural racism you're gonna have to look at the case of that man who lives in cape town who was literally thrown out of out of his shack naked would they have done the same thing had it been a non-black person um so it's things like that that you literally just kind of have to see would see how structural racism is and if you look at the player who who, who plays for the protest and he was sharing his structural racism um uh experience at the hands of white people so and there's also a lot of like economical and political racism so it's really just not about caring about what uh people call us or using the k-word and I personally believe that racism is just a one just one way to strip a person away of their dignity and it really needs to be addressed it really needs to be made away on awareness of and here I literally just don't believe a person a black person has enough power has economic power to um, you know to be racist However, I will believe that they can be prejudiced, they can be discriminatory, and both of those are actually unlawful. So you can also um, 
take a stand against that obviously so yeah uh so the easy answer for me is no and nope black people are not racist nope 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 so cool guys so if you experience any sort of racial conflict with someone or you are at the receiving end of a racial biasness or a racial tension or in fact homophobia your age your gender or anything like that you have every right to report them to the south african human rights commission and take it from there so that concludes my video uh thank you so much for tuning in i hope it was a bit informative and a bit uh whew. i i try by all means to remain objective and it was just toying a lot of my energy around this um so yeah hope you guys enjoyed this video see you guys on my next video adios